This is Off Planet Radio. Hey everybody, welcome to Off Planet Radio, offplanetradio.com and offplanetmedia.net. I'm Randy Moggins. I'm back after, <laughs> I don't know, I mean, I got ejaculated through the solar system and shot back down into a chemtrail storm. So if my voice sounds a little uh, ragged, it's because I have chemtrail fever right now. It is um, winding up the month of April, heading into, uh, we're in it. We're in it right now. It's a shit storm. It's uh, another ritual season that the elites have put on us. We'll lead off, uh, I got an interesting article here. That I do have a guest with me, and I'll bring him in in a minute, um, because I don't think I'd make it through a whole show by myself, um, and I don't want to. But uh, my uh, friend Mark Gray over in France sent me a very interesting article, and uh, I'm going to pull this up. This is timely. And this is from Mark's website, which is freedomufos.com. Mark is a... Uh, Talk show ho in yeah talk show host in France who used to be on um, Kerry Cassidy's Project Camelot. He's independent now, and this is what he does. But he sent me this article this week, and this is um, this is pretty interesting. Um, it's called "The Star with Eight Branches: Point Zero, Jupiter, Sumer, Ishtar, and Hollywood." Yeah, and it says since last Monday, this would have been of course uh, Monday the fifteenth when the great uh, ritual of the spire of the Cathedral of Notre Dame took place, the fire that, um, well, at one point, you know, it's really interesting. I was watching this real time, and the Wikipedia, which is always a source of amusement, had listed Notre Dame as having been demolished on that date, and I screenshot it just for prosperity, prosperity because Sometimes these little internet memes mean something. So it says, since last Monday, a geodesic landmark has changed with the hall, with the fall of the arrow of Notre Dame. Interesting that, and remember this website's being translated from the French. The zero point is located about 50 meters in front of the entrance of Notre Dame on Ile de la Cité in the fourth arrondissement. The road mark that materializes this point in the paving stones of the cathedral square takes the form of a compass rose. There's, there's one clue right there. Carved in the center of an octagonal, octagonal bronze medallion. It is surrounded by a circular stone slab divided into four quarters, each of them bearing one of the inscriptions in capital letters, point zero roots de France. It should not be considered as a geodesic marker that would materialize a geodesic point. For example, the closest geodesic point in the RGF was until the fall of a, the fire of April 15th, the spire of the cathedral. Following its collapse, the closest geodesic point is the spire of the St. Paul, St. Louis church located just under 800 meters to the northeast. And let's see, here we got the wiki, which I did not pull up, so we'll just kind of bypass that. But that um, that's interesting that we've got these two cathedrals, and we'll talk about this more. What is this Church St. Paul, St. Louis, located a little less than 800 meters northeast? It is known as the St. Louis de Jesuits Church, located in the Marais District of Paris, 4th arrondissement, in a religious building built in the 17th century by Jesuit architects Etienne Martelange and Francois Durand on the orders of Louis XIII. Located on Rue Saint-Antoine, the church is next to the Lycée Charlemagne, an old house professed by the Jesuits in Paris. The double titular of the St. Paul, St. Louis Church is inherited from the French Revolution. Jesuits and Revolution, a passing just innocuous, so waiting for the reconstruction of the arrow of Notre Dame. 
Is it possible that they have deliberately changed the zero point in Paris compared to the Mandela effect to produce a Mandela effect from the CERN? Is it necessary to have the spatiotemporal coordinates of the place that one wants to impact that is also valid for the trip in the time? Again, some of this is translated from French, so it's, uh, it's a little um, uh, it's stilted. It should be known that in the absolute point zero is the place of balance where the source is, the neutrality, it is the I am. <clears throat> the cathedrals were built by insiders on strategic locations. On earth, interdimensional vortices are interconnected by landmarks or buildings that are strategic landmarks. The Illuminati proceed slowly, but surely waiting to see their next act. The fact of having changed the zero point in Paris is certainly not trivial. And he goes into some other details about uh, this old film, The Infernal Tower with Steve, Steve McQueen and the terminal, the road terminal uh, with the wind rose on the forefront of the cathedral, which was Jupiter's famous eight pointed star. And he talks about the fact that Macron has called himself Jupiter that the Illuminati made the film Jupiter Rising by the directors, the Wachowski, yeah, the Wachowski sisters now, isn't that weird? The eight-pointed star represents the Jupiter and the Anunnaki, that Hollywood puts this symbol in most of its films, which must mean something specific in the vibration and level and telluric power. Moreover, the brothers who became the Wachowski sisters who made the Matrix trilogy, Cloud Atlas, Sense8, or Netflix, among others, have not been successful some time. The Wachowskis were forced to close their offices for their production houses for lack of projects. Would the double sex change and their professional setbacks have anything to do with their, this Jupiterian course? This is the eight-pointed star, symbol of Ishtar, detail of Kuduru, of Melishipak, I found in all Hollywood movies in ritual optics. In several pagan and neo-pagan traditions where an analogy is established between the fertility of the earth and the fertility of women, hierogamy most often performed in the night before May 1st, this is the key point here, the celebration of Beltane in mythology, Celtic, Wallapricus night in German folklore, and it's a rite of fertility supposed to symbolize the planting of the seed in the earth and favor the rains. These traditions, however, refer to principles considered divine. And that's the point I wanted to get to. It's not a coincidence that um, we had the fall of the spire of the Cathedral of Notre Dame on April 15th and in going into the gateway of uh, Holy Week, uh, Easter, Good Friday, and we are coming up on May 1st, which of course is May Day. And it is a high ceremonial season. I think we're looking at the consecration of something. I think they're trying to get their juice gone. So let me bring my guest up. Um, no introduction is possible for uh, Rock Estaldo. He is uh, a master of deciphering the occult. He is a talk show host who is, uh, well, he'll tell you all about that. Um, but we're going we're gonna to delve deep into this Notre Dame thing. Rock Estado, hey, my friend, welcome back to the house. Welcome back. What's up? <laughs> How's back. it going, Randy? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you for letting me uh, share this time with you. And you're sick. It's, it's, uh, we'll pull through it together, buddy. We will. We will. Awesome. Awesome. Good to have you back on. It's been some time. Yes, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. And, you know, uh, I'm not claiming to be an expert in, in Notre Dame or, or, or any of that, but I have done some viewings on this subject and I, I, di I dove a little bit into it. And yes, you know, because of my background and, and my literal DNA, um, I'm able to uh, basically pull things out of occult practices that most people wouldn't even think about or, or you know, it wouldn't even cross their minds to, to think in that category of, of, of things. But yes, I, I appreciate the introduction and, and that is one of my expertise is, is being able to decipher certain things like that and, and being able to view them. I think it's interesting that, um a couple of things come up. First off, this this concept of the rose windows. Yeah, and I, I wrote a few things down while you were talking at that because that, this is the first time. Thank you for showing me that because it's the first time I've ever heard of that gentleman, and uh, that's very interesting. Yeah, um, 
the rose windows also play into some connections that have been made by some of my friends on Facebook. I don't know if you've seen the second season of the TV series, The OA, which runs on no. Netflix. No, I don't watch much TV. Well, that, and that's fine. Um, but at the end of that series, there was a rose window. It was wow. literally an interdimensional portal that was portrayed. Yeah, well, we're going to get into that because even with the, uh, the Notre Dame de Chartres, I think, or Chartres, or however they pronounce it in French, the Chartres <laughs> Cathedral, this is on the most sacred ground in that area. And I believe that these are interdimensional gateways and the rose window might even turn into some sort of swirling portal or swirling gateway. And uh, that's, that's quite possible because we do, we do exist on a multi-layered reality. So if they're able to manipulate through technology into you know, another layer of this existence, another layer of this reality, then that rose window on another energetic level of our reality might be a completely different look than that rose window that we see as distinct class in this physical realm. In another layer of this existence, that might be a swirling gateway, and you might be able to transfer, transfer you know, into these realities through technology. And, I, and, I, and, and let's, first of all, let's, let's talk Isn't about Isn't it interesting, that. too, by the way, that, again... I know that sounds woo-woo to some no, people. It's, it's, no, it. well, it won't sound woo-woo to this audience, and, and I think this audience understands that we, we go pretty deep into making the connections. But one of the things that I thought was interesting is I watched that uh, spire drop, the yeah. spiral, the spire, the inspire, the aspire, um, was this building has two towers, not dissimilar at all to the twin towers that fell on 9-11. Yeah, and, and medieval towers too. Yeah, and yeah. you know, the symbology behind that and the power behind it is, uh, considerable and, and people fail to i don't mean to cut you off but people fail no, no, to no. even people uh i heard people no, no one's even mentioned the fact that randy beneath i mean the the catholic church you know of course hijacked the energetic location and built their own stuff on top of it but let's first talk about what's underneath the cathedral of notre dame in paris i mean this there's an altar yeah. literally dedicated to cern cernunos who's a, a horned god, uh, the god of the underworld. And this is underneath um, the, 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 the main altar, uh, of, uh, underneath the cathedral, I think. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if it's a, underneath the exact altar part, but underneath the cathedral of pa pa Paris was the supreme deity of Gaul at the time. This is uh, Cernunos, Cern, you know, the horned one. And this was a sacred site where the Catholic Church built their temple on top of. And that's a big part of this because this is the god of the underworld. You know, this is the horned one. And they, the little, the horn of Notre Dame was set on fire, you know, the horn. So, I mean, that's literally the horn coming up from the underworld, the phallus from the underworld coming up. Baphomet's phallus was literally yeah, lit on fire, possibly yeah. by an energetic weapon. Because that spire to me looks like some sort of antenna. It doesn't look just like a normal top of a cathedral. It looked like some sort of weapon. Some sort of, uh, you know, it looks like it's, it's made to, to receive technology and transmit something. Yeah, look and, at that. Yeah. Look at that thing. We're going to throw some images up as we go through the show. Both of us are off video. And, and you know that I do, I do believe that that was transmitting some sort of spiritual transmission, some sort of spiritual technology. And you'll see like they, in the article that you presented earlier, they do have the, the Star of Ishtar on there. And, and uh, if you look at most Roman obelisks, they have the Star of Ishtar underneath a cross on almost every ob obelisk in, in Rome and, and throughout the world. Some of them have a cross on top and then that Star of Ishtar underneath, the eight-pointed star, which is also the Star of the Fairies. You know, this, this, it's a elemental Star of the Fairies. You know, that, this is a, an ancient symbol. And it's also related to um, opening doorways and opening gateways. And, and, you know, that is a, is a big energetic spot that it's on. And, you know, they, they left the two ancient towers and took down that spire, you know, and, and they claim to hate the spire, but I believe that it was some sort of a spiritual technology that was being transmitted through there. Yeah, absolutely. Lit it on fire. And, Maybe that, that rose window did turn into some swirling gateway, and you see Knights Templars in clothed the Knights Templar outfits running during the flames 
on the top level. You know, um, we have it on video. I don't know if you've ever saw it yet, but there's a, a clothed Knight Templar in full Knight Templar gear running in video during the flames, during the burning, trying to hide between the beams. You, you could see it. I don't know if you've ever saw that yet, right? I need to look this up. Yeah, wow. look up. Uh, my buddy Leo Zagami showed me. He, he, he presented it right on Alex Jones. Um, just write Knights Templar um, Notre Dame um, in YouTube or wherever, and you could find it real quick. Because uh, we'll look that up right yeah, now. Yeah, it's because it's, it's, I, I do believe it's a, it's a swirling gateway. Um, while you look that up, we, we can get into the, the Sharks uh, Cathedral for a second. And, and all the cathedrals in, 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 uh, in Paris sort of make out the Virgo constellation. All of these um, ancient, ancient uh, I guess you could call them, you know, Gothic, Gothic architecture, but. You know, one of the uh, most amazing mystical mysteries of all, Randy, is the Gothic architecture of these stained glass windows, these cathedral windows, because it first comes in the 12th century and then it disappears like 100 years later, never to be seen again. Okay, so this is a technology that the Knights Templars took from Jerusalem. The beams that they used in to build this 800 or something years ago was taken from Mount Hermon, the friggin' literal um, oak, of, the oak of lebanon yeah yeah that's that's the mount that's the mount with the, ne the nephilim were. yeah it's 33 degrees yeah. uh you know of this is a longitude is. that that is mystical this is even in 33 degrees in, in long beach is where i had my portal uh weird experience when uh, you know 15 years 16 years ago now but and that's on the same parallel, the 33rd parallel. And that's where they got this wood from. And I believe that it was set on fire through an energetic weapon. And when the, the flames were so – you could see the color of the flames. And people were talking about, Randy, that they, they, they could smell the old wood in the air. They were inhaling it. Now, I do believe um, from what I – when I viewed this, what I saw, and I know it probably sounds crazy to some people when they hear it, but I believe that the, the wood that was used in – the building of this cathedral was a ritually programmed. It witnessed the rituals of the Knights Templars, of the Baphomet and the CERN rituals that the Knights Templars were doing. They were drinking starfire in their chalice. All of these rituals that they were using um, was ritually programmed in the memory of that wood. And when it was set on fire, it released those dark ones and inside that energy. And people were literally breathing it in on the streets and inhaling that energy and that spiritual transmission. And so I believe it was a, 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 um, a domino effect of occult things that took place during that fire. And if you want to play that, yeah, you could see. Yeah, that, uh, we'll just go. I don't think we're going to get sound through on this, but. Uh, yeah, it's probably better off if you don't get the sound, but you could see, I mean, look at the, the, the way the behind what it looks like too. That's where, that's my buddy Leo there. Uh, we, we share a lot of knowledge together with each other. He, um, I've interviewed him before, and uh, he's a Vatican insider for Alex Jones. And, uh, you know, he, he's got a lot of knowledge, and he was part of these traditions at one time. You know, he took place in Illuminati rituals, this guy, Leo Zagami. So um, no one knows more about this than him. I mean, he's right in the, in the action mostly. And I do trust, look at the way it fell too, man. Look at that. Yeah, this is footage I hadn't seen before. Yeah, wait till you see this. It's, it's either, I mean, Leo saying it could be some sort of ghost of the Templars. I, I don't think that's the case here. I think it's either, Larry is, look. Wow. Full Knights Templar outfit yeah. during the, no one's supposed to be up there. It's closed due to renovation. You got somebody with that chain mail in a white robe with something over his head. That's what, I mean, he's not from uh, a video game. This is not a video game we're playing here. That's, that's reality. Okay. That's reality wow. on the top floor. Nobody has access. So I believe um, from what I viewed or from what I saw that that's quite possible that he walked through some sort of gateway. Um, and, and that's how he appeared up on that. That I got back a little bit. I want to see that again. Yeah. I mean, otherwise, you know, they, these are ancient churches. They are probably a lot of secret rooms and secret entrances and exits. So look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Randy, it's amazing. I mean, that's, wow. that, that's not a Muslim outfit. That's a Knights Templar outfit. They're trying to say it was a Muslim. That's Knights Templar gear. 
I mean, you had the video, you had the, the picture up a moment ago to, to compare it. Yeah, 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 you exactly. Know, yeah. It, it was uh, literally the same, same outfit. You know? That is amazing. Yeah, and you could see he's almost trying to hide between the beams. Mm -hmm. He was trying to run real quick because he knew it was on camera. You know, he's got to know it's being recorded. <laughs> One you more know. time we'll get with that. There we go. Yeah, where the intense. Wow. Yep, and it's almost like he disappears right there. Yeah, it is. That's what I was looking at. It's hard to tell where he came from, and it's hard to tell where he goes. It looked like... I don't know. I don't know what that was there, but see, I do believe this is connected to CERN and, and like the article said, the Mandela effect, all that. I do believe our reality has been changed. You know, we've been transferred somehow to an alternate, alternate uh, re layer of this reality. And I think it started somewhere in the 12th century with all these buildings of these sacred sites. They were doing some well, sort of time manipulation. I've been having this conversation for a while. Um, and I actually popped up in a in a thread this week on Facebook about um, CERN and what the Mandela effect is. Um, what I do know is that in 2011, the um, Looking at Glass project uh, failed. And going into 2012, at one point, the elites became blind. They literally, the uh, Looking Glass project was a simulator. It was literally a real-time simulator that used humans as imaging plates in order to create these simulations that they then ran real time. What we were, what they called predicting the future or doing predictive programming was in fact running simulations through batteries of human subjects and then running the programs. What happened when Looking Glass failed was then CERN was activated and the Mandela effect kicked in because of these field effects that were occurring, latent field effects from Looking Glass funneling through CERN. And CERN's right on top of the Temple of Apollo. You know, it's right on top of another sacred site. Yeah. And now they want to build CERN too, right, right under Lake Geneva. Wow. Are you kidding me? Do you know the power of that in terms of water is poured? I know you do. Yeah. Well, we yeah. talk about this a lot. I was stunned when I saw that. What I, what I see in all of this is a lot of desperation moves going on in terms of them trying to get their juice back up because it's pretty clear to me that they've, they've lost a considerable amount of um, potency as people are waking up. Yeah. And, and you know, that the rose too, that rose is like, you know, that, that's seen as a, 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 some sort of like vortice energy center. Like, you know, the, just the, the, the whole rose is like the Lotus, you know, it's, it's, it's like an energy center and, and for them to have that there, I mean, and, and the Chartres cathedral is, is the, the South door of it is uh, for the Knights Templar it would be like opened up to the Knights and they were, um, you know, just to be knights, you have to, first of all, Randy, like just to be a knight, I know, you know, a knight's Templar, just, if you are a knight's Templar, that, that, let's uh, assume you've already ha uh, had to, ha um, ha reach a required, like a uh, spiritual, um, understanding, right? You're like to be even a knight. So if you're a knight, you are, you already reached some sort of required level of spiritual, uh, awakenings like you've already went through some sort of training you're you're already spiritually enlightened if you're a knight's templar so they literally built this for seeing auras for seeing chakras uh the glow of somebody and and they built this for uh, some sort of gateway this the south door um they would leave open to the knights right and they would enter and their heads would be at the height of the the jesus christ's feet they have a statue mm -hmm. of christ there and they would rock walk right through it where and then through the door they would see christ sort of emblazoned, right? Sort of uh, all like brilliantly uh, glowing behind this spiral of radiating light from the window. And his halo is the rose window as a shimmering mandala of the world. You know, this is, this is a, a amazing uh, cathedral. I mean, it's on the, the biggest en energy center of that area. And this, this is, a, I, I believe that this is a part of it. You know, this is part of what's going on. Um, with Notre Dame and everything else, the, 
this uh, Chartres or Chartres Cathedral is is one of the most intense cathedrals in the world, and it's also called the Notre Dame. You know, it's 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 the Notre Dame des Chartres. You know, and it's on the most sacred ground to these to the French and, and to this area. And I I think it's it's literally built all these uh, whether they say it or not, it's built to the Mother Goddess. These are built for the mother goddess. Yes, yeah, so well, that's the words Notre Dame means our mother. Yeah, yeah. So these are, it's not, it's just, it's, you know, this is a, almost like a, a druidic sort of uh, ancient technology. You know, this is not Catholic stuff we're seeing here. This is ancient occult. This is. So uh, do you think we're looking at the revival of the matriarchy? Yeah, I mean, this is definitely this cathedral is like the womb of the earth to to uh, the Knights Templars. This is where you pull in the goddess. This is where you start uh, and create. You know, this is where this is a uh, you know this is there, there's no other uh, like I said there's no other Gothic glass like these cathedrals. They, it just doesn't exist. They they had some sort of hermetic alchemy that they were using when they made these glass windows, and that's a fact. You know, and this this disappeared. This technology, you we can't recreate. I'm wondering if these windows are in fact quartz. I'm not sure exactly what they're made the fact of. That I, it's just a theory. I know that some of these windows have been repaired over time. I'm not sure about. Well, I, I know. I do know Randy for a fact from things I've researched and from even reading. I I, I read it extensively in the in the in the early 2000s and and throughout the last 15 years or so. Lawrence Gardner. Even though I don't like that he yeah. a lot, keeps out a lot of the Etruscan and Roman and Italian stuff, he stays. Uh, he doesn't keep. He doesn't talk about that too much. But he talks about how they definitely employed Persian philosophical mathematicians um, to help uh, build these these windows. So they they literally incor- incorporated like the cosmic breath of the universe inside building these windows. So like they they use secret processes of manufacturing glass within this by mathematicians and and you know philosophical ma- philosophical ma- mathematicians like uh so this is this is something that we can't recreate this is something knowledge that that is only passed on through sacred traditions if you're a templar or if you're a, a high degree mason or something like that because um this technology disappeared to us like like i said they they were building these in stages during the 12th century 100 years later this technology was gone you know, we, we, we don't see it anymore. They're not making these windows anymore. And I do believe they're swirling gateways. You know, there's whole uh, witch covens that are built on the, the power of the rose. If you see a lot of mystical ecstasies in the Catholic Church, it has to do with roses being a, appearing and someone having a rose or Mary carrying roses or, you know, Guadalupe having a, a things of roses in in. in in her, in the in the you know the the painting in his cloak or whatever he was carrying roses all of these uh different this, the rose is a mystical object it's it's a it's a gateway you know it's a, I, i've said it before the power of the rose is intense and it's it's used as a unique power to transform this these ultraviolet rays that are in there into beneficial light and you know the secret of of how they built this was never revealed. It's it's not known to us, and it's some sort of hermetic alchemy. I just keep looking at the structure, and and you know, we've all seen these before. I, I even St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City. Yeah, and you've got to admit, it's anomalous sitting where it does in Midtown Manhattan, and it, it is like an edifice that was materialized out of another time. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, I mean this this was a, a pagan uh site. You know, especially the 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 Chart- the Chartres, uh cathedral. I mean, this was dedicated to like we said the mother goddess and it was built the original altar was built over the altar of the druids which which was like a sacred dolmen that they had there. And you know, it's like I said they called it the womb of the earth. I mean, this is this is ancient sacred area and they're if you uh, look into some of Lawrence Gardner's books, like I said, like I mentioned him er- earlier, mm-hmm. there's several cathedrals yeah. that he points out that are built into the Vir- that make out the Virgo constellation, and I think it's the Chartres, uh, uh I think it's the Reims, and and one other. Right? There's, there's there's a few of them. I'm not sure exactly all of them. I got to look in the book again, but 
um, th there's they make out this Virgo constellation, uh, and they're called the Notre Dame cathedrals. Like there's a there's a bunch of them, and I think there's actually like a you know a dozen of them or half a dozen of them all together. I think, but there's they they really do make the the constellation. I don't know. I mean that can't be a a, a coincidence. Coincidence? Oh no, of course it's not. No, I mean we know so, that they're mapping everything on the grids. Yeah. And, and that is uh, intense when you start to think about how how these were laid out and why this technology is not known to us anymore. I mean, uh, the Cathars, uh, I think, were took part in this technology. They they knew about these technologies and they were burned just like the Templars. So and they were destroyed. I mean, yeah. this was the sect. Uh, this was what eleventh, twelfth century Christians. They believed in reincarnation. Um, they were considered heretics, heretics yeah. by Rome. I mean, yeah, I mean, because they, they did, they believed in Rex Moody that the power of evil was just as strong as the power of good, and, mm -hmm. and uh, no one believed, uh, you know, that was heresy back in those days. But these Notre uh, Dame cathedrals, uh, Randy, they they are they called the the people that made them like the children of Solomon, they were a, a group of masons that exactly. were led by the St. Bernard, Caesarian, uh, Cisterian, or uh, Cis I, I have problems with that word. Sister, sister, I forget. How do you Cisterian? Cistercian? Cister Cistercian, so, yeah. Something like that. It's his uh, St. Bernard's Order, whatever it's called. Uh -huh. But it's, uh, he had the, the secret geometry of King Solomon, you know, and King Solomon's masons. So look at the, look at the window in that. that yeah. Guy. I mean, just look at the, the geometry behind that. That's a Intense. mandala. Yep. What a mandala. It's a mandala. That's why I said it's a, it's, yeah. it's a world mandala. Yeah, it's the it's a co it's like the it's a, like a, a a microcosm of the world. You know, all in there. It's it's serious stuff, man. So, where do we overlap the the different orders that are involved with this? Uh, the Druids, for instance. I mean. We kind of have a picture of the Druids as being these dark lords, but were they not, in fact, much more connected to earth magic and the spirits that were native, we would say, to the land? Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, they had the power of the spoken word. That's, you know, yes. where, where they each each tree and they would be a, a, a syllable, like a, a symbol. And they would have like a <clears throat> like tree out. It's like tree ruins, like tree alphabet. And they 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 literally had similar to like in, in Hindu and Buddhism, certain chants and mantras that can have can literally shake the foundations of the heavens. You know, can be so strong that they can even raise the dead. You know, some spoken words that they had. And you know, Randy uh, Saint Patrick, he converted a whole isle of pagans into Catholics because of the power of the Druids. He was a slave, and uh, he, he, while he was a slave, he spent time with a lot of master druids, and they taught him a lot of. And he must have been uh, a born shaman, a born spiritually, uh, you know, with that those capabilities of of acting that uh, activating that within his, his DNA. And he was just a natural because he picked up stuff from the druids, and he literally took those, you know. I don't know if you want to call it uh, technologies or magic or whatever you want to call it, but he took what he learned and he basically converted. Yeah, he converted a whole island of pagans because he raised the dead. He was raising the dead, Randy, with with stuff he learned from the druids. And you know, there's a there's a tale of Saint Patrick when he encountered one of the druids' high priests, like uh, the high priest was ever to, able to uh, start chanting and lift himself off the ground into the air and levitate really high, and then Saint Patrick brought him down to the ground and killed him. You know, brought him down hard and killed him off onto the ground. And and they uh, with his chanting, you know, with his secret chanting that he had, his prayers, and uh, you know that that's crazy, man. I mean, he was killing people with his his raising people from the dead and killing people to prove a point. And that's how the Roman Catholics got their conversions through miracles, through through raising people from the dead, through resurrections. If you look, mass conversions always are related to somebody being resurrected from the dead from some sort of saint. Or some sort of miracle like that, you know, yeah. it's crazy. Which which brings us into the timing of this this um, fire, yeah, at Notre Dame. I mean, because the Easter observance 
which is tied to the Passover and Ishtar. It's a lunar and, and Ishtar, yeah. but it's a lunar holiday. So it does not always fall in a particular, it can run anywhere from, I think, the middle of March to the end of April yeah. in terms of the, the lunar cycles. So the timing in this, in my view, and because of April 15th and because of April 15th, April 15th is, it's a ritual day. It's a day where they do big shit. Yeah, it's, it's also honest. where uh, I think in like 1314, uh, Jacques de Molay who was like the last head of the Knights Templars. He had something that, that happened around that time as well. Yeah, yeah. And you had the Titanic going down. Yeah, it definitely did go down that day. And last year, I think New Zealand had that bombing or, or something happened. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Same so you, you have the April 15th date. Coincidentally, it leads right into this fire. And six days later is the observance of the resurrection of Christ. And now we're in this next gateway heading up to Beltane on May 1st which you know this is where they do their conjuring this is where this energy is gathered and when I when I looked at the spiral spire falling off this cathedral I, I was just you know I was so struck by the absolute power of that image it was much like watching the World Trade Center's crash you're right. In terms of the shock effect of it. But even you look at that spire and you go, what the hell was that thing? And how does something like that come down? I mean, even the former engineer who was at the Notre Dame Cathedral stated, he can't imagine what it would have taken for that wood to burn. As he put it, 800-year-old wood does not burn like that. Yeah. I mean, Plus, you see the color, the color of it too. Yeah. It was like the, the the color of the flames was. What like, if, what if that would? It's a couple of things. I mean, let's just assume that you're right about that wood being what it is and where it came from. That this was programmable matter on a supernatural level. Yeah, it was definitely ritually programmed, and you know, and and that the rose window is a, a an energy field. I mean, it's a it's a circle, uh, some sort of containment field of energy you know it's that's what a circle is you know and, and that rose is a swirling portal but that wood let's talk about that wood too for a minute yeah, yeah. And, what, and what it really contained in it like i said it's it, it, it witnessed literal giants probably literal they don't have this wood anymore this is wood that doesn't exist anymore they took from jerusalem you know this is ancient oak and and the oak wood is is powerful the oak um, uh, if you ever go into the forest and try to communicate with trees and, and to see the auric field of trees, the oak is, is one of the most powerful trees in the world, mm -hmm. the sacred Absolutely. oak, I mean, especially yeah. to the Druids, you know, and it's almost as, as, as dense as a mineral, as a rock. That's how heavy the oak is, can be. You could program it with so much information and so much knowledge can be contained within the oak that it can be so dense and heavy like it's a, a rock or a mineral. You know, it's, it's, it's an amazing uh, instrument of, of energy, you know, this oak. And I, I do believe it was programmed with these ancient rituals. And it, it literally is from Mount Hermon. And we have these disembodied spirits on this planet that they call the, the, the dark ones or the Rephaim. The Rephaim, yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and this could be what's being inhaled is literal dark ones, these Rephaim. Oh, it's so interesting that came up. I was just... I'm getting ready to do an interview with Mark Gray, the guy that, that sent me that article. And one of, the, one of the items that I'm looking at in context of some research I've done is into the Rephaim, the dead ones. Yeah, well, you know, the, I believe that I, from what I've experienced in my life personally and from backing it up with the research I've done for over the last 30 years of my life, you know, ever since I'm 10 years old, I've been diving into these topics. And um, I do believe that what we think is schizophrenia, uh, what we think is uh, emotional problems, what we think is people talking to themselves, what we see as really 
crazy paranoia, all of these mind viruses that we pick up are directly from these disembodied spirits of the Raphaim. They were literally born through sorcery. They were born through some sort of, they're both physical man and they're part other dimensional creature. And they're, they were here on this planet, brought, brought through, through temple uh, sorceress. You know, they, they, their, their mothers were literally, their DNA was rearranged so they can give birth to these creatures, these, these half uh, non-man and half man, whatever you want to call it, half alien or half human or half interdimensional, half human, whatever you want to call it. But they were giants. And I do believe the watered down versions of them, the more recent ones are the ones that you see in the Bible, like Og and and Goliath, but they were 10 to 15 feet tall. But I believe there was others that were even bigger before that. There was, you know, different, different uh, incursions that happened and different breeds and, and all different versions of them. But I do believe when they perish, they're still attached to this physical plane if they're earthborn. The earthborn Rephaim, I believe, are the disembodied spirits on our planet. Yeah. The ones yeah. that were earthborn because they're physically attached somehow to this 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 realm and this these the, these multi-layered existence that we have on this planet you know their their energetic bodies are still attached to this physical realm somehow you know and i be do believe they plagued the minds of humanity and some of them probably were good people some of them were bad people some of these refaims maybe some of them were actually good so maybe some of them try to help people and, and maybe some of them you know are, are a mind virus who knows but I do believe that's what's literally in programmed within the wood is is some of these entities that that come out and people are breathing it in, you know. And I do believe it's connected to volcanoes. If you want to get into that sometime tonight as well, and and I, I do believe those are ways that that these beings were made. That basically a volcano is like a mystical cal cauldron of of sacred fire. And if you look into Kabbalah or Kabbalah, uh, you'll see that the the three major elements of creation are are air fire and water you know and a volcano is all of that it's all of that together and it's a cone and it's connected to the core of the earth and i believe the extinct volcanoes um from what i've viewed from visions that i've got that they're sleeping entities or giants or whatever you want to call them that are laying dormant beneath extinct volcanoes waiting to be re-emerged waiting to be activated again and i think asteroids and Meteorites might be what activates that when they come into this realm. Um, they're connected somehow. And uh, I do believe wow. that, uh, yeah, the asteroids uh, and, and caravan are sort of like caravans that, that terraform planets. They're, they're not here by accident, just roaming through space. They're actually summoned here or brought here through technology, and they literally change the environment. And they're worshipped as, as gods, and I do. Well, con they were always considered harbingers or omens. Yeah, and most of, most prophets or sibyls always uh, embody right. some sort of sacred meteorite stone or something like this. Yeah, even the birth of Christ. I mean, yeah, what they call the three wise men. Well, those those were Babylonian astrologers. They were. Yeah, they were Persian Persian drug peddlers too. They they <laughs> those guys, those magi man. They were literal, uh, you know, shaman. They 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 carried all sorts of hallucinogens and and herbal or herbal mixtures and stuff they 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 were uh that's yeah. so interesting that you would go into that uh, i have an interview coming out here uh shortly with um a british mk ultra uh witness who talks about the druids and and these ancient ceremonies i think i i even told you in chat today when we we'll, we'll talk about uh the the tree incidents later too because i, I want to go into that but yeah we could talk his, about that for sure. yeah, his, his story to me in um a, a conversation was that he went up onto a mountain where there was a druidic um bonfire taking place he literally saw them walk into a portal behind a tree and disappear much like that much like that uh templar knight in the in the notre dame thing yeah you know i've had experiences with trees <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're yeah. gonna get there. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's very interesting, and and I do believe that uh, though these trees, you know, they they can become gateways. They can be programmed to be gateways, and they can uh, they exist. They're they're, they're like uh, anchors. They exist on a multi dimensional level, and if they're put on certain spots, certain energetic spots, they become like a, a an anchor. You know, they're they're a gateway, some sort of quantum tunnel between realms. 
Yeah, like a battery. I mean, look at the, look at the cathedral again. I look at. I'm sorry. It looks like a big ass battery with a bunch of uh, capacitors. Yeah. And 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 antenna. And this goes into, which is all the rage now, the Tartaria stuff. Yeah. Research. Um, some of that's <clears throat> a bit distorted, in my opinion. Uh, but. There's a lot of people who's been emailing me about stuff like that. I haven't got into it too much of it, oh, but it's like, all the rage now. Yeah. And there is something to it. There's something to be said about the fact that clearly there were civilizations, like you were pointing out earlier. This, these cathedrals were built in the 1300s, and 100 years later, the technology disappeared. <laughs> yeah. all these things. It's like, what the hell happened? Did we get stupider? We can't build these things today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's intense. Yeah, they they really uh they they took this, you know, the Knights Templars found ancient technology or handed ancient technology and they took it with them to their to their grave, you know. They 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 were burned for it, you know. And if it's if we do have this technology, it's in the halls of the Vatican, you know, and and it's locked away somewhere. You know, this is uh I mean that Chartres uh, Cathedral, Chartres, Chartres uh, de Notre Dame it was uh there's parts of that cathedral that are represent the ark of the covenant and the and the the mm -hmm. um the power of the ark of the covenant you know it's 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 shown within certain parts of that church within it and uh i do believe that it contains it's it's a literal weapon it could be trained into a church, turned into a weapon it's exactly what the ark of the covenant was yeah yeah it and was that's some kind of free energy device it was clearly a weapon yeah they they can transmit not only spiritual technology but they could be weaponized and you know i i recently i don't know i don't want to jump too far off topics or, or whatever but i recently did viewings on malta and uh you know i i do believe there was an energy sound weapon used underneath malta as well an ancient one that brought thousands of upon thousands of people to their graves instantly shattered their bones shattered everything and when they first went down there, they found like 33,000 bones in disarray. You know, uh, and I remember reading that in, uh, I have an old National Geographic from like 1920, talking about when they first went into the temples of Malta. And, and Randy, the, the island of Malta has temples beneath the whole island, beneath yeah. the ground. Yep. Beneath the ground. And they're literal sound acoustic waves that can be amplified through there. And there's some sort of energetic uh, sound weapon that was used, and I felt almost the power of it uh, when I when I uh, you know tried to view it. Uh, it it, was, it felt like the house was gonna fall down for a second. It was weird. I woke up out of a, a this little dream I was in, and I felt like the house was gonna crumble for a sp split second. And I, you know, I, I felt the the power that it could bring down. I mean, literally, it brought down the walls of Jericho. Some similar device exactly. as well. Yes. You know? yep. So. This this is they possible. Called those, they they say that they marched around Jericho and that they used some sort of we would say maybe they used shofars or trumpets. Yeah. I, I, I think that's an oversimplification. I think they were sound devices, weapons. That's a hell of a shofar to bring down the walls that were <laughs> those walls were were not inconsiderable, as I understand it. They were what a quarter mile thick you're talking a massive construction in jericho so whatever they were using was just incredibly powerful again on on a scale we don't understand i mean i'm sorry what we've seen displayed of nuclear weapons thus far yes they're deadly yes they're destructive they don't touch what this is yeah yeah, I, I agree. I mean, this uh, is the hammer of Thor on steroids, <laughs> for sure, for sure. You're 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 100 percent right. Um, I mean, there there's a uh, there's so much we can get into too about that. I mean, this uh, this Knights Templars too. I mean, they they're they they worshipped uh, Baphomet. You know, they they worshipped that was one of their gods. You know, and. I, I think this this ritual was part of that as well. It was a part of bringing something back into this realm, you know, and uh, it's quite possible that there was some sort of gateway that was activated. And, you know, we're going to see, I think we're going to see more of this, 
You know, we're going to see. Oh yeah, uh, I, do, I do too. Absolutely. Uh, our, uh, our, our American society doesn't really hear the news, but before this fire in Notre Dame for the last year or two, there's been over 800 vandalizations of church uh, vandalizing of churches. Um, I don't people think to realize that, but I think over 800 churches have been. I did burned. actually hear this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, vandal, uh, vandalized or, or in some way messed with in, in France over the last year or so. So this is not new. This is just a culmination of the last year of what's been taking place. You know, this, this is, you know, this is ridiculous. I mean, it, for them to say it's an electrical fire that happened, um, you know, or something like that is, is, is like an insult. There is no explanation. They've offered nothing. Yeah. Like I said, the retired engineer who oversaw the modernization at Notre Dame stated the electricity, the electrical system in Notre Dame was impeccable, literally short proof. L said literally, there is no way, I think his exact term, he was translated out of French, was that you'd need a hell of a lot of kindling to even start a fire with that wood. That wood's almost, that's almost like a petrified. I mean, think about petrified forest, think about petrified wood, which is wood that has become like stone. I've got a piece of it here somewhere. Yeah, um, it's like petrified, yeah. It's yeah. literally petrified. And what happens is you can't burn that. That's like burning rocks. Yep. And the that, compression of that material over time. It's just like uh, like how you compared it to uh, in 9-11. I mean, that fire in 9-11 in in where the Twin Towers were, that was burning for months. Months. Yeah. Months. And we speculate on this. We don't have good theories. We never had good theories. And I think the reason we don't is we've limited ourselves to things like thermite or directed energy weapons or conventional technology that we know about and not really appreciated first off what the world trade center itself was the place that it occupied why they can't build there again why that steel was all collected and shipped back to china from whence it came that building was a portal yeah and anybody that was in that building Anybody that walked, and I was there, that was on the top tower of that thing, saw the vista of that, understood that was supernatural in terms of those two towers and what they represented. And when they came down, they were never going to rebuild that, just as I don't believe they will rebuild Notre Dame with any authenticity. It will become something else consecrated to whatever forces and powers they want to consecrate it to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, wild stuff, man. It's really, it's really wild. I mean, uh, and, and it shows you, I mean, that, that Templar out guy in a Templar outfit on the top. I mean, come on. I mean, what else do you guys need? I mean, I have no, I had not heard a response from uh, any French anything just saying what that Templar was doing up there or what that person was wearing or any response to that. I mean, how do they explain that? How do you explain that? You can't, you know, you that can't was, explain it. That was, in my opinion, the gatekeeper right there. Yeah, right. Going through the gate. Yeah. You can't explain that. No, it's, it's quite supernatural. So the way we do things here, Ra, is that we do an hour and then we take a break. And the second hour is usually the high-end stuff that we put out for our Patreon people. Okay. So um, as we bow out of this segment, which will go out on the public channels, um, I'd like you to talk a little bit about yourself, what you're doing, where you're doing it, uh, websites, YouTube channels, Patreon, da -da -da -da. give us the vitals on Ra Castaldo. Well, if you guys never heard me before, my name is Ra Castaldo, and you can find me at themysticalspiral.com. You can also find me at patreon.com slash themysticalspiral. I do a radio show every Saturday night from 7 to 9 Eastern on Truth Frequency Radio Network, and it's called Eye of Ra. You can subscribe there or check it out at tfrlive.com slash eye of Ra. 
Um, I come from a, a long line of dream seers and hereditary shaman out of Italy. Um, we come from ancient Etrusca, ancient Etruscan heritage. Um, some of my family's from Volterra in Tuscany, and some of them are from Lake Nemi, and also some of them are actually from near Naples, Afragola. So I have people from all over Italy throughout my family, and I've inherited that genetic memory, that DNA from my ancestors, and um, I've been awakening it you know, throughout my, my life since my near-death experience at nine years old and being able to understand my genetic history and, and who I am as a person little by little more and more each day. And, you know, I, I've been able to incorporate the knowledge of my ancestors into the products that I'm offering to as well on my website. Uh, I now have my tensor tools. Um, I have crystals that, that are for sale and things like that. And I use a, a, an, an ancient force called the Odic Breath. That some some people call it the odic breath or odic force, where you can basically charge the blood in your body with any ancestral memory, whether it's healing, whether it's uh, uh, whatever whatever you want to do. If you want to heal, if you want to awaken your ancestors, or your more knowledge, if you want, and mostly uh, for healing, I use it for something like that because these tensor tools are basically based on healing, and crystals are based on healing. So if you want more psychic connections, you want uh, more connections to earth, you want less stress, less emotional stress, things like that. You would tap into the knowledge of your ancestors, you know, all the times in your past that your ancestors has healed and you charge that energy in your blood and it, it flows to, like the chemicals in your blood start going and it, you transport that to your lungs and then you br basically breathe it onto the object. And so you can find tensor tools other places or crystals in other places, but you can't find them with the, the energy that I put into them, you know, so they're custom made tensor tools. I have one that's called uh, the Daywalker AccuVac, which uh, I have right here. It's a, uh, it's a, a pendant that basically it's made out of the spiral, like the spiral DNA spiral. And there's a loop on the top and on the bottom, it, it pulls out pain from your body and, and it, it pulls out the bad energy and puts in new refreshed energy and it balances you physically and emotionally. And it uses, uh, acupressure points, you know, and it's uh, used on injured or sick people and it's used to speed up healing, balance your chakras, uh, less jet lag, all of this stuff that your energy centers in your body get, get polluted with. And that's what it's used for. And I also have another one that I uh, only have a few of right now that I got to make more of. And these are designed by me, you know, so um, my specific, uh, I, I found the purest copper I could find all of this. So I also have the other one, which is like three spirals um, looped together inside the tensor ring. And uh, you can find them at themysticalspiral.com on, on my website. And they basically uh, balance emotional issues. This one clears blockages, relieves pain, elevates your energy, it reduces your fatigue, and it protects you from uh, all of these, protects you from EMF, uh, 5G. It builds like a force field around you. So they're really strong. I mean, they sing with energy because I, I use a frequency generator an orgone and pyramid and a frequency generator to uh, enhance the energy with 432 megahertz. I beam it with it. So it's like singing with vibrations. When you feel it, you could feel it awesome. almost like nipping at your fingers. <laughs> cool. Yeah. All right. You got to avail yourself of this stuff. That's uh, mysticalspiral.com. My guest, Ray Castaldo, he's going to step in on the other side and we're going to go deep. We're going to, Take a break for us and say goodbye to those of you. If you want to join us at Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV, it's patreon.com forward slash Off Planet Media. Join up right now. $3 a month. This is Off Planet time. Radio. And uh, you get to see the second part, which we're going to do next. Truth is out there. It's inside you. And we'll see you on the other side. Spiral out. You are listening to Off Planet Radio at offplanetradio.com.